Alright, so good morning everyone. Welcome back to another day of Fargo's Soul Mod. Today in Terraria, it's miserable and raining. And as I look out my window, it's the exact same. That's right. England has been kind of awful recently. I don't know where the sun is, but I'm a little bit concerned, alright? It's been lost for a while. But yeah, welcome back. Today is a pretty important episode. We're going to be doing the Lunatic Cultist today. However, according to you lot, the Lunatic Cultist is actually really hard. So, knowing me, this will be the start of our new catchphrase, a brand new saga. But we'll see what happens. I will also say, at this point in the mod, there are loads of little things that we could actually be doing. We could be grinding for many, many mega accessories, but I feel like I want to do that when the mod starts to get like really uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? For example, when we couldn't beat a boss, we spent all that time working on the Bionomic Cluster, and I really did enjoy that. I thought we got it at a really good time. So that's how I'm going to treat all the other accessories, because if I don't need to grind for them now, it will be easier in the future when I'm more powerful. But will I be more powerful without them? I don't really know. I don't know. I ain't a wizard. Right. Um, or a prophet. <laughs> okay. What are we doing to start today's episode? We are doing a couple of Duke fights. Now, I cut these out of yesterday's episode, but I killed the Duke, I want to say, 10 times yesterday. I cut them all out. They all had reactions and all that, like I spoke over all of them, but it ended up just being too much juke, so I was like, nah, I, ca I can't keep doing this. <laughs> like, I can't include 10, not failed attempts, because I won every single one of them, but I was like, I can't just include 10 loads of me just getting a gift bag, you know what I mean? It just felt a little bit strange. So, yep, we're back on the juke fish on grind to look for the juke weapon, which according to you lot is a ranged weapon. Ooh, very exciting. But yeah, this was made a lot easier with the Duke Fishron wings. And then even today, it seemed easier with the Betsy wings. Man, Betsy was was great yesterday. I really enjoyed it. I just loved that um, it looked like the Ender Dragon. I thought that was really cool. And as a lot of you pointed out, the attacks were actually based on uh, the weapons you can get from the event. Which was really cool. Like, I feel like um, Mr. Fargo Man did a really good job with that boss. Because that's a hard boss to change, in my opinion. Betsy's, um, well, she's different. She's different. But I think it's because she's from uh, a crossover collaboration. So it's like, it's kind of like a Terraria boss. I mean, it is a Terraria boss. I don't mean it like that. But it's like, it's in a different style. It had to be authentic to something else, if you know what I mean. Right. Um, we're actually not doing that well. <laughs> Here's me like, oh, yeah, I'll be fine with the Betsy's wings. Nah, not quite, James. <laughs> Still gonna, still gonna dodge all the attacks. It's because I'm starting today's episode and I'm not really, like, uh, <laughs> paying full attention. Do we get the Duke weapon? Ah, oh, may as well. May as well. <laughs> I'm so over the Duke, though. I am. Alright, let me go try it some more. I'll, I'll be quiet. I think, um, talking probably, <laughs> probably didn't help. But hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you are actually doing alright. I will say this once again. Thank you so much for checking out the Terraria Chippy collaboration. It is still absolutely blowing every expectation out the water. And I'm really serious about that. It, it is. Like, it's it's crazy. And I'm so, so grateful. And um, it's nice because people's stuff has actually started arriving. I think it's only... And this would make sense. The sticker packets have been arriving for people that just ordered um, stickers, which is quite cool. But obviously because uh, they're super easy to send in the post, right? And they get sent from uh, England, Britain, I believe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do. So all the British people are getting their stickers, um, which is ace. So maybe yours might arrive today. Oh my god, there we go. We actually got it. The fish stick. <laughs> The carcass of a defeated foe shoved violently on a stick. Amazing. That just reminds me of the, the South Park joke, which I'm not going to explain. Um, so, so, we have it. All right. I, I'm feeling pretty complete right now. Here it is. The fish stick. I can't imagine I ever got this in my original Let's Play. So, let's check it out. It's a fish. <laughs> it's a fish on a stick. Oh. Oh, it's... Sh it, it, um... It spawns tornadoes all the time or randomly. I've got no idea. So it's a ranged weapon, right? 
Yeah, 102 ranged damage. So maybe... Ah, uh, right, okay. I was going to say maybe what we'll do is we'll use it for um, for the boss fight. But the only problem with this is, and this is really lazy, I, I will admit, is to get the best armor, we need to get, um, what is it, True Might? So to get True Might, we need a fake biome, and then we need to wait for the NPC to move in. Then we need to go get some more stuff. So I think for now, I'm not too bothered. As long as I've got it, I feel pretty complete. Um, it's a material as well. Let's actually start looking at some of these materials. Nuke fish run. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's on point. So, um, there are going to be upgrades to weapons all throughout this. Um, for example, Arch Wizard Soul. We've worked on a lot of this. Other than Betsy's Wrath, we have almost all of these. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, right, that was it. We're meant to be working on the events today. All right, so that is something. Before we do the Lunatic Cultist, we need to work on the events. Right, I will admit, I did actually completely forget about that. So, <laughs> look, holding up my hands here. Um, right, so, let's actually have a little look then at, um, at making that. So, I don't know if we have. Let's check. So, the first one is the present um, overloaded. So, the present is made of ectoplasm, souls of fright, and silk. So, we need more silk straight off the bat. Um, I think we need to get a loom, right? Need to pull a loom out of here. Let's go for it. Uh, loom. Hey, hey -o. <laughs> Get excited for the loom, everyone. We can probably get rid of the solidifier now, to be fair. Right, so... Silk. We need a lot of this. So, good thing is, we have like a million cobwebs. Uh, and then we need to go get some ectoplasm. And then while we do that, let's actually change the time to day. Um, is it day? Yeah, it's day. Uh, can we cancel the rain? Hell yeah, cancelled the rain. Can we do that in England, please? P please. Um, how is it you get pumpkins again? Is it the dryad or is it the merchant? I want to assume... Hmm. I want to assume dryad. Let's see. Yeah, pumpkin seeds, right. So we're going to plant a bunch of these. So we'll do the Christmas event first. Uh, we'll also head to the dungeon in a minute. So let me grab some of these bad boys. So yeah, we're going to go get ectoplasm. So one thing I did want to talk about, and I'm a little bit gutted that the moment is kind of lost in this sense, but I wanted to talk about how the Terraria collaboration connection all came to being, specifically the designs. So we are going to have a live stream soon on Chippy Gaming with, with the artist that made the collection possible, which I'm very excited about. And... Not only that, it's going to have a very special guest, which I won't reveal. I'll reveal it soon. Um, but basically, booking them in is, is going to be hard because um, they, they seem like a very busy person. So that's going to be coming up soon. Anyway, how did, the, how did the designs come to be? Well, here was the process. Basically, when we started the collaboration, I was assigned an artist uh, called Anti Dark Heart. And they are amazing. And I love their art. And I knew of them before uh, we actually got to meet for the collaboration because they did the pixel art for PewDiePie's designs, for Felix's. So I was like, all right, I'm in good hands. And I really liked um, their style. And then because I knew it was a Terraria collection, what I did was I made a mood board with all the things that I wanted in my collection. So what I put on it was the Skeletron, the Dungeon, uh, Terraria Enthusiasts. I also put down the pronunciation of Terraria Enthusiasts. I put down a cloth ear that looks more like me because I thought that that would be a little bit more unique in that sense. It would make it feel a little bit more special if I had a custom sprite. Um, and that was pretty much what I put down. I also put down the Chippy's couch. I said that I wanted uh, an image where it looked like I'd hoarded a bunch of stuff, which is what became of the Chippy's couch design with a couch and then all the dungeon loot behind it and some potions and stuff. Um, so that was basically that. And then I said to the artist, Auntie Darkheart, I was like, I would like you to make me these things. So um, she made the the version of me, which you see on all the designs. Um, oh, this was another thing. I wrote down what items I would like in Terraria if I just had items relating to me. So I wrote down uh, a skateboard, a DSLR camera. So these are all sprites that were made. Uh, a YouTube award, 
and um, a Nintendo Switch because <laughs> I really like the Switch. So I said to the artist, I was like, can you make me these sprites? Can you also make me a Terraria Enthusiast logo? Um, and then from there, uh, I was the one that like mapped them out and where they went on the on the designs. I, I did the couch one from scratch. That was all me. Um, the Latin pronunciation underneath the Terraria Enthusiasts, that was me. Um, so if you're just wondering how it, how it all worked. Um, but then the Skeletron design was actually all basically um, the, the company behind it in Relogic, essentially. They were the ones that were like, oh, a Skeletron on a shirt with the arms and bones? That would be really sick. So that was all them. That was really cool. And Anti Dark Heart actually drew the amazing line art you saw on that design. So that's it. That's where the, the collection came from. Um, so now when you wear it, you can wear it with pride. But yeah, we're going to have the artist on the live stream because... Much like when Mythical Water uh, helped in our collaboration, I really want people to know the people behind the process, you know? It's as much their work as it is mine, and I'm really proud of it. So yeah, that, that sums it up pretty much. Um, but yeah, Relogic were great. I could do anything I wanted. Free reign, pretty much. Like, there was no restrictions. Like, zero restrictions. So it was, it was awesome. Right, so I think that is uh, enough stuff for now. I guess that was good, because we might have... Um, I don't know if we did, but we I'm assuming we probably got something from that that we didn't already have. Just because, you know, we've not spent forever in the dungeon. Man, look how broke I am. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm sorry, alright? I, I, <laughs> I've got no money management skills in Terraria. So, uh, the present. Let's craft it. Bam. Awesome. Now, here's the thing. I would... I totally would use the, the battle horn on this event. But I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't do that. Because I want to kill the mini-bosses, really. That's what we're doing this for. So, just for those wondering, maybe I haven't been keeping up. Um, we're doing this because of the fact uh, that the mini-bosses drop accessories. And we're going to need those accessories to turn into mega accessories at some point in the future. But it's just good to do right. Like, as you can imagine, there's there's definitely stuff to, to gain out of this. Right, where's the where's the big tree? <laughs> it's over here. I love the I love the Frost Moon event so much in Terraria. I really do. I am a big sucker for seasonal events in any game. I don't know if it's like um, am I Gen Z? I, I've got no idea. Am I, am, <laughs> I don't, am I a Zoomer? I don't think I'm a Zoomer. I don't know. It might be my generation, but obviously my generation were kind of raised with uh with mobile games uh, in part. And mobile games are always like, hey, it's Christmas. Christmas update, anybody? So I've always been a big fan of this. Just like having this like seasonal stuff. I'm like, I'm, I'm a big sucker for it. I really do like it. Um, but this is going really well already. Like, I can't complain. I like that they drop um, presents as well. So that's pretty good. Especially if you didn't turn on the, the Christmas event in the Fargo Soul Mod config. The fact that you lot know that still blows my mind. I'm sorry. How did you lot know so much about the configurations of Fargo Soul Mod? <laughs> You've all got too much time on your hands. That is cool to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm very grateful that you lot told me about that. But I would never have guessed that in a million years. But I know some people. Some people are like, oh yeah, second a game comes out, I'm straight into the options menu. That's where I live now. <laughs> the game starts here. Right, so here is the Ice Queen. Now, I'm assuming... That this is probably going to be very difficult. Um, I don't think we're at an unbalanced point to, to do this event. Honestly, I'm... Oh, God. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not quite sure. Um, man, she really hits hard. Wow. I'm going to be lucky if I even beat this. Yeah. I didn't think I didn't think I really stood a chance there. But, but over halfway is, is fairly decent. Like you, you actually can't complain too much about that. And she's still alive. Hallelujah. All right. Amazing. <laughs> Now I stand a chance. Thank you very much, Terraria RNG. I appreciate you. Ice Queen, please come back. <laughs> My queen, come on. <laughs> come back. All right, drop um, your item, and then we can call it a done deal. Did you drop the item? Nah. I'm going to assume... I'm going to assume that you can probably respawn these with, um, with like, items and stuff. Maybe I'll use this because it's homing. I can't... I can't stress enough, I love homing weapons. I really do. If you don't have to think about aiming, it's so much nicer for me. Come on, Ice Queen. Oh, God. Come down here. <laughs> Come on. Follow me. <laughs> Follow me. Come on. Alright. Now she's probably going to start doing that circling phase, I reckon. 
Is she? Yep. <laughs> Great. Worst phase yet. <laughs> I think we're going to do this one, though. So this is good. Wait, did she despawn? Oh, my God. It's the worst. If she didn't despawn, she better have dropped an item. Oh, God. Right, so this should be the second one down. And there we go. We got it. I think that was the item. The, the crown. Yeah, all right. Awesome. Uh, let me just make sure that's picked up. The Ice Queen's crown. Okay, great. So that's pretty much it for this event. The thing is, once again, we could farm all these events now for all the special items and such. But in reality, it's, it's not too crucial. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're going to be stronger post-Lunatic Cultist. Because we're going to get all those, like, uh, fancy Moon Lord weapons and such. So we have... Uh, I'm going to activate this now. We have, like, a minute and a half to get this to wave 15. So I'm just going to try and kill as many enemies as possible. Because I really want to knock this off of um, boss checklist. So let's see how far we can get. <laughs> the game might explode, but that's alright. Alright, I've got the, the fire extinguisher on standby. Man, talking about electronic fires. I actually thought I was going to start one yesterday. That sounds really bad. That's not something I'm proud of. But I was setting up my GameCube yesterday for... Um, because me and Court were going to play Mario Party 4. And I had this, like, HDMI booster analog thing for the GameCube. Because my TV won't have... Uh, doesn't have the right ports on the back now. Because it's an old console. And I used the wrong cable on this HDMI booster. I thought I had the right cable. Must have been for, like, something else. Anyway, it was way too much power for this HDMI booster. And after about a minute of playing, I was like, I can smell burning. <laughs> So I, I'm paranoid about stuff like this. So I was like, right, let me let me just sniff around. And it was the bloody HDMI extender or whatever. I could like a little bit of smoke coming out in the middle. So I think I must have melted it with the power of whatever I put into it. But yeah, straight in the bin, all right? <laughs> Never risking that. Be careful with your electronics, everyone, all right? <laughs> the funny thing about this is it's not like I'm actually overly powerful. It's just that when you get so many enemies, you get so many extra damaging orbs and such. Oh my god. The game will explode. Look at that. Wave 7. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. We can bring. We can turn this off now. All right. So let's work on the, the Pump King. Let's see what special little attack he's got. Oh, I can kind of see it. He spawns a cluster of scythes. Great. Man. Master mode Pumpkin Moon is really hard as a summoner. I'm still not over that yet. Oh god. <laughs> I think we will, I think we'll be fine with this, in all honesty, but this one's pretty good. It's actually fairly well balanced as well, around the Frost Moon one. Alright, so did we get the item? No, but we got the Raven Staff. Is the Raven, oh no, we did get the item. That's it. It's the Pumpkin's Cape. So now we're just doing this, the rest of it, for, uh, for the, the boss checklist. So let me just crack on with this. Probably nothing more interesting to see with this, in all honesty. So what we've got to do is basically just um, just wait to heal up. We can sit here. We can relax. We want to go into the, the final fight with... Um, <laughs> I'd say final fight. Probably going to do this like 100 times. Uh, but I want to go into it with like full health, uh, no potion cooldown, all that. I'm going to try use Razor Blade uh, Typhoon. This has got a good reforge on it. People were asking me yesterday, why didn't I reforge it any better? That's pretty good, right? 20% damage, 10% speed. I think it's good. Right, okay. So, let's begin. Let's throw some of these at it. Right, here we go. And I got an item, which is sick. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and hit the, the lunatic with... Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to try hit it with um, with a, t a tornado just to see. So yeah, people have said once again, uh, this is going to be really rough. I don't know, because I'm getting frozen. I don't know if there is... Oh, maybe the, the Ice Queen accessory is probably what I should have had on for this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that would have been really sick. So the only thing with this is, when it comes to the duplicates... There's kind of a lot to, to kind of deal with here. So my ultimate goal, honestly, is to try and circle for as much as I can and rely on homing weapons to, to kind of sort me out. But in all honesty, I'm never going to be able to tell which one's real and which one's the decoy, mainly because I've got a smooth brain and my mind can't think that fast. <laughs> okay, right. So I can see why this is really hard because of all the debuffs. 
I mean, we just literally got killed by a debuff. Let's have a little look, actually, um, at whether we can make that accessory now. The the one with the... Yeah, I really like that you get... Wait, so what's that? Does not spawn the pillars on death. Oh! Oh, okay. So it's just for killing the lunatic cultist. Interesting. Let me, let me quickly check something. This one. Is this what we were working towards? It is. It is what we we're working towards. So this is post Moon Lord, but we have everything other than the Galactic Globe, which I still need to work on. I don't know where that comes from. But okay, interesting. Um, let's have a little look at just if... All right. If it looks like a crazy soul person, that means we're not making it. What I wanted to look at, really, was the... Was the Plantera Bulb one. Let me quickly grab that. Because I knew that there was... You've got the blob. <laughs> You've got the Plantera Bulb accessory. Um, but you need the Lunatic Cultist thing to, to make it, right? Yeah, Chalice. Uh, but it's all post pillars. Right, okay. Okay. So what I was thinking is we could use this, get the special item, and then kind of move from there. So let's... But we're not going to do that. Let's get the Icy Crown. Grant immunity to Frozen and Hypothermia. So that might be sick for this. If I keep getting bunced by the by the cold inferno. <laughs> Alright, menacing. Let's replace uh, that for now. That's a pretty rough trade-off, isn't it? It's pretty bad. All right. I, I don't know how quickly the lunatic cultist spawns back in. So I'm just going to head over there and, and hope for the best. Yeah, so they're not back. But what I think we might do then is... We might just try and get its item from it. Let's, let's try that. So my thinking with this is, is this might give me the item for uh, the Lunatic Cultist. And my thinking is, well, if we can get the item for the Lunatic Cultist, usually the items the bosses give um, actually stop you from getting all the, the negative buffs from it. So like Duke Fish runs, you know, basically stop you from losing max life and, and such like that. And yeah, my thinking is, if we do that, then um, then we might be better off. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So we'll do this, and we'll treat this as the real fight. Even though this technically is the real fight. Get the accessory, and then when we do the real, real fight, when it's spawned back in again, then we're prepared and have a good accessory. Does that work out? I think it does. Yeah. I like the logic. So it seems like this arena just keeps getting larger and larger. I kind of assumed it would get smaller and smaller. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? The game's like, nah, we'll, we'll give you a good area to work in. This is, um, I'm, I'm already really noticing the lack of, um, the, the accessory that we had from Duke Fishron. So that accessory from Duke Fishron gave you 20% extra damage. So you lose out on 20% by taking that off. And we, we stop getting frozen. But my idea is basically... Oh, okay. My idea is basically, look, if we can stop that from happening, that's good. <laughs> okay, right. Um, see, I'm trying to figure out when it does that attack where it fires downwards. Whoa! Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. It throws pillars at you. Oh, my God. Wow, I, for I completely forgot about that. That really, I loved that. I, when I first saw that in the original Let's Play, I, I, that was sick. That was so sick. I love that. That's really cool. Um, all right, real one again. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Still gonna have problems with it, but um, at least it's the real one. All right, let's bring it over here. Come on, lunatic cultist. Hey, there we go. All right, I'm glad it actually <laughs> went for us. For a second, I was like, oh no, don't spawn like. Over there, that's really boring. Hey, we're doing good damage this time. I feel like our damage is, like, higher. I don't know what it is. Might just be because we don't have mana sickness yet. Something like that. Tell you what, that's one thing I, I could maybe get in the habit of doing. To stop attacking in the phases where it's teleporting. Because we're wasting mana, causing mana sickness more, and we're losing damage because of it. But then again, it's just like, just fire away. Then you don't have to think about it, you know? If it's, like, one less thing to think about, I might be able to focus on something else but let's see this first phase really isn't too bad 
I do really like uh, this weapon, though. It's a cool weapon to use. So let's just keep this going. I'm going to try commentate over the whole thing for this one, since this one is uh, the real fight. You know what I mean? Oh, took damage there. He definitely gives out some of the best debuffs <laughs> out of any of the bosses so far. Although we haven't had Frozen um, past couple of times that we fought. So that's pretty neat. I love that spinning skull effect. It's so cool. So we have 15 seconds left on the heal. Um, if we get to that point, that would be sick. <laughs> There's so much to avoid. It's um, <clears throat> very impossible to think about. Okay, uh, zero seconds left. We've got a heal. That doesn't really mean too much because our damage is so low. And we keep getting effects where we're like just constantly taking damage. So I presume, I presume there is probably an accessory that we could be making now that negates some of these. So if you do know it, let me know. But I think for today, we'll round up the episode there. That was a lot of fun, guys. I really enjoyed that. Shout out, as always, to our channel members scrolling by on screen right now uh updated and improved uh, i say improved i just made sure it's it's more up to date right guys thank you for watching see you in the next one blah 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 peace <laughs>